Hey guys, Dan here. Mick here, hello. Uh, so you'll know us from that pedal show. Today we're doing a very special, the, the third part of the three-part series for Guitarist Magazine. Yes, Guitarist Ultimate Drives feature, uh, where we've gone through a total of 12 pedals, which kind of start with boosts and end up where we are now in video three with, shall we say, high gain. <laughs> we were just discussing before we hit the record button, one of the most important questions, which is, what's the difference between overdrive and distortion? And this is not a joke. No. The main difference is the harmonic content, okay? If you look at an overdrive pedal, um, the way when it, it uh, puts the note into distortion, because it's still distortion, but it uh, has a lot of even order harmonics. It just sounds very warm and lovely. With distortion pedals, you get more, you still get the even order harmonics, but some more odd order harmonics in there as well. And it just sounds angrier. The, the, com the compression, the way that the top of the waveform is cut off is a lot sharper. Mm. Um, and it sounds a lot more aggressive. It's still the same concept though. It's, it's just more and angrier. Good, I think we can all understand that. I'm pleased it didn't turn into a physics lesson. Okay, because, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so as we said, we've gone from boost into even order, smooth curve, overdrive mm -hmm. in video two. And now we're into video three, we're into the higher gain stuff. And we're, again, looking at pedals that across the years have really been kind of watershed moments. Absolutely, and these pedals have probably been cloned you know, more than, as much as any other pedal. Um, so let's start with the DS1. Imagine it's 1980, you've got some hair metal thing going on the radio. And the guys are sat in their bedrooms going, I don't want to sound like that, you know? <laughs> so Boss put out the DS1, which is a very angry sounding distortion pedal. So let's start with the AC30. Okay. Yeah, just to explain that, we've got two amps plugged in. We've got a Marshall JTM45 and uh, a Vox AC30. Of the amps we have here today, the most, the two most appropriate amps for these pedals. That's right. right. So, AC30. Hello, ladies. Just, just as an aside, not enough people play Les Pauls into AC30s. So that no, sounds they, ace. They, they really don't. Okay. Now, with the DS1. I'm just going to say this, that's the best sounding DS1 I have ever heard. Yes, this, this particular DS1 belongs to Dave Gregory. He bought it in 1984 and appeared on you know most of the XTC stuff you've heard since then. Okay. Corker sounding uh, distortion pedal. Everyone I've heard since then sounds thin. Doesn't sound like that at all. They, they're different. Right. The new ones are different. This okay. is an old one. It sounds particularly great. The thing with the DS1 though, it has a lot of bottom end. All right. Imagine again you're that young kid and you plug this in and you're a little as um, amp at home, mm. and it sounds fan huge. It's this massive bottom end. But also, now let's hear it into the Marshall. So, Marshall by itself. DS1 into the Marshall. It's a big, fat, angry sounding. Yes, yeah, so and if you if you were play, playing a guitar made out of like balsa wood or whatever it is those guitars are made out of, you know, like a um, basswood guitar with one of those. No, I'm being deliberately <laughs> difficult. Here. If you were if you were playing like an 80s hair metal guitar, like an Ibanez or a yep. um, Jackson or something like that, a lot of that mid range would be scooped out even more. Absolutely, you? And yeah, you would yeah. get that kind of, especially if you had some crazy idiot bucker in the, uh, in the bridge position there. Sure. So, very aggressive sounding, and that is with the distortion actually down really low. Yeah, and I noticed you've got the tone pot cranked as well. Oh, that's the level. No, see, that's the level pot ah, in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Right, that's the distortion. Now, I want to look at the OCD by full tone. Because it's another distortion pedal that uh, the internet sort of blew up over when it came out. 
Uh, fantastic sounding thing. If you imagine, you know, when Boss was making this, they were making it to a price point. Well, what Full Tone did is they do with all their stuff, they just simply make it with the best quality components yeah, yeah, and everything they can. Yeah. So, we'll compare the, uh, the OCD to the DS1. This is into the AC30. DS1. OCD. Again, very angry, but, but, the, but there's more mid-range in there. It's more even. There's, well, I don't know whether it's more mid-range or there's just less bass. Right. It's, uh, permission to play your guitar, your other guitar a minute? Yes, absolutely. Because I think none of these... I don't think... We, we could try in a second, but I don't think these pedals are going to sound particularly good with a Strat because it's going to sound weak. But this, I think DS1, Tele bridge pickup. Into what app? Uh, let's try Marshall first. Okay, so let's, without the pedals. DS1. Now the OCD. Definitely tighter in the bottom end. Yeah. Yeah, but also that mid range is a little bit more pronounced. Yep. Um, Certainly with this guitar brings more of the aggression I would associate with with an overdrive with a distortion pedal. Yes. Now the reason uh, so the, the tone range on these things is quite broad because most of the time people are playing these with humbuckers. Mm. The humbuckers are more compressed than your standard single coil, so they've made sure there's enough tonal range in there so it's still Sounds full yep. and, and edgy with a humbucker. So, yeah, another great sounding distortion pedal. Now we have the Rat, okay? The Rat, when the Rat came along, um, it is again, it's a high gain overdrive, bordering on, you know, it can be fuzzy, but this filter control was uh, oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. new at yeah, the time, yeah. okay? So again, let's let's switch between the OCD and the RAT, and you'll hear what I mean with the filter control. If you would. Uh... that the bottom end is nowhere near as full yeah, as I, the other ones. I almost dare go up here, but let's do it anyway. Okay, so let's do it into the AC30. Okay, I'll do the same thing, yeah? Yep. So, I equate the rat as the tube screamer of the distortion range. Okay. If you, like. you know, yeah, yeah. it has that really pronounced mid range, it shelves off those bottom end frequencies. Um, we know when you want to be heard and you don't want all that thumping bottom end, the rat is a great choice. Mm. And it partners better with a Marshall type amp than it does a Fender type amp, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, you know, we know, as, all, as we keep saying, there are no rules. There are no rules. There are no rules. Um, but, uh, yeah, fair dues, fair dues. Okay. Finally, I wanted to show you the Marshall Governor. Good reason for this. Um, there are lots of really great uh, distortion pedals that owe their existence to this thing. Origins based on the Marshall Governor pedal. Do you know, I'm just going to interject here and say that I remember reading Guitarist right. back in the day and seeing ads for that that pedal mm -hmm. and just wanting it so bad. I've got a feeling there's one on Still Got the Blues by Gary Moore, isn't there as well? Can't you see one in, yeah. the, in the... 
well, he's, on the album cover. Yeah, so when Marshall bought this out, there was a series of them. The Shredmaster, yeah, yeah. the Drive Master, um, the, the Governor. Uh, the Governor was a you know, unique circuit. You know, back in, so back in the day, this was Marshall um, broadening their horizons as they were. You know, whereas nowadays it's with phones and fridges. Back in the day, <laughs> it, they, were, they started to you know, think, okay, pedals, yeah. awesome, let's make this happen. So the circuit and the governor is quite special, um, and they also have this three-band EQ. All the rest of these here have Seven, yeah. a single tone control. Tone, yeah. So the governor was something that you could dial into pretty much any amplifier. Yeah. Um, so let's have a listen to the, uh, we'll use a Les Paul into the... Incidentally, if you're wondering why it doesn't go bang every time we unplug the guitar, it's because it's one of those Neutrick silent switching jacks. Clever, isn't it? It is clever. Mm. Uh, thoroughly recommended, just as a point of... Right. There's Paul. Marshall. Clean. Yeah, I mean, it's worth saying that the JTM 45 is on the normal channel, and it's not, you know, it, as you can hear, it's not like really banging, because we wanted to be able to hear the pedals predominantly, so... Yeah. With the gun. <laughs> That's as good as it gets. I'm not playing any more today. Um, I want to try it with the telly and then I want to try it with the, uh, I don't know, 335 maybe. Great, great call. Yeah. But that, uh, that's fat. It's huge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's the governor into the AC30. Yeah. Governor into the Marshall. Right, so there you go. And you'll hear that the Marshall the, the attack is a little bit softer, but it works brilliantly into an amplifier that is quite open. Now, that pedal into an amplifier that's dimed, it's a little bit too compressed. Mm. But that lovely, big, open, clean sound, it's fantastic. Because it, it sort of simulates a natural amp compression. It's great. But whereas these are a lot faster on the attack, and they sound a little bit more aggressive, Mm. Yeah, but still, all in the high gain range, you know, they've all got that their own individual flavour, as it were. Okay, so we've, we've played a, um, a, th a telly and a Les Paul. Should we just try a couple of other guitars yeah, and absolutely. see what happens? Yep. So we'll just whip through this. I mean, we, we instantly veered for the more, I guess you might say, mid-rangey guitars with these pedals because our brains were telling us that's where we should be. Now, instantly, we've got a hollow body humbucker guitar. Feedback, feedback. Well, yep, yeah, feedback. So let's see if that works. So, Marshall. Killer. DS1. Nice, isn't it? ICD. Rat. Which hand for win? Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> the 
last one was the governor. The last one was the governor. So let's hear it with the strap. Bonkers. I, 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 how have I missed the governor all these years? Right, where are we going to start? So let's, if, let's do them in order. Yep. DS1. Yep. sounding yeah <laughs> um, and the governor <laughs> sounding compared to the to all the other guitars but yep. still still really nice yeah really really nice yeah so you know a lot of people hear the word distortion mm. and think it's it's not a musical thing but it's so can be um you know just setting them up right so it's with the right amplifier right guitar you're away okay uh of our four guitars four pedals two amps what's mm -hmm. your what's your favorite combination got to say Les Paul, Governor, Marshall. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I it, instantly thought of Gary, of Gary Moore. Yeah. And, and, I, and I know that's half my brain going, he used, that's kind of what he used, okay. but the, the sound. Mm. Yeah, 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 completely. And it's so flexible. That EQ, yeah. you know, means you can dial it into to anything. And that's an interesting thing, actually, with the EQ of all these pedals. Um, you know, when you think of that... 80s heavy rock sound you're mostly thinking of el34 type amplifiers into closed back cabinets yep which have a very tight bottom end mm. so it's very important the amount of bottom end that you design into these circuits yeah because the ds1 that had a lot of bottom end um you know into a into an amplifier like say a twin or something that already has a lot of bottom end it's not going to work as well but into a closed back cabinet with a tight bottom end Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the rat, which doesn't have a lot of that bottom end, you put that into a into a twin, a nice sounding twin, killer. Mm. You know, so it's very amp dependent. You know, but again, with the governor, because it has that lovely EQ, you can tailor that to anything you like. Well, there we are. Video three of three videos for guitarist ultimate drives uh, feature. As ever, we've learned that asking better questions is the way forward rather than there are no definitive answers. Absolutely. But exactly what you just said. Yeah. Guitar, pedal, amp, any one of those three components is going to change the sound a lot. Yeah. So but One thing we haven't touched on as well in, in any of these videos, which is something you know that's really important, it all depends on the way that you play as well, the way that you attack the strings. You can have the same guitars, same amp, same pedals, but if we simply swapped as, as players, we would probably choose different things, mm. you know. So, like I said, there is no definitive answer on what sounds best. You've got to get your hands dirty and try these things out for yourself and see which one connects with you as a musician. Um, but there's some great options. There yeah. are some amazing options, actually, everywhere. Well, if you pick up a copy of the, of the magazine with, with the supplement, um, what you'll find is each of these pedals is discussed slightly more technically on the page. And in addition to that, there are some um, recommendations for other pedals that you might buy that get you in that, yeah. in that ballpark. So uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. Yeah. Uh, shout, big shout out to my mate Barry Haynes, who at the last minute came in with the, uh, with the governor. I was really keen to make sure we had it here for the video. So cheers, Barry, you're a legend. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, this is the last of the three-part series. If you've missed any of the other videos, just go back and check those out as well. Um, 
But uh, yeah, it's been a load of fun and we'll see you soon. See ya.